What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pro Speed Baseball. In today's video, we're going over a very important subject and that is transferring what we're doing in practice into the game. I had an online student send me in some video and his swing is getting so good in practice, the cage, whatnot, and now they're outside hitting on the field and in the game and it's like we've never done any training before. It looks completely different. We have one smooth swing, one herky-jerky swing. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you the number one thing that you need to check before you look at anything else as to why you're not transferring your practice swing into the game or batting practice. Let's go ahead and get started. So when my online student sent me in video, we've been working on the swing, everything's looking great. We're getting a great low stride position, transition's looking beautiful, releasing the bat into the ball, great, everything's great. And then when we get onto the field, and he was sending some video doing some, all of a sudden we're not in a confined space, we're not in a cage, we're not hitting into a net. We've got this big old field or we're in a game. I see something about like this. So something's crazy, right? Something's going on. I know that looks a little bit funny, but it's really not that much of an over-exaggeration of what I've seen a hundred times before. And that is when we get into the game, everyone wants to get tense, they get rushy, they feel like they got to you know, all of a sudden you see a field out there and you're like, oh, well, I got to do a lot more than what I do in practice to, to, to hit the ball harder or whatever it is. And we sacrifice all the training we do in the cage on the tee when we're working on our swing and our mechanics. So what we're going to do is focus in on the first piece that throws us off. And it's the, most, it's the most common piece that I see is that we start getting rushed in our load stride. The thing about our load stride is we get no power out of our load and stride. The power comes from our swing, when we start to make our swing. When I'm getting set in my load stride position, I'm not, I'm not creating any speed here. I'm creating a, a, a catalyst to start my speed, but I'm not creating speed. We need to make sure that we are in a relaxed, athletic fashion, getting into that load stride position so that we can allow ourselves to utilize our training. So if I'm practicing, with a nice smooth athletic load stride where I'm load striding nice and easy, making swings, you know, hitting the ball pretty good, blah, blah, blah. and then I get into the game and I start death gripping the bat and falling off and stepping out or doing something crazy, well, I'm cooked. None of my training is going to transfer onto the field. So what we need to do is be very conscientious of our load stride and the pace and rhythm of our load stride position and how we are, where, where we are when we get there and how we are or how we get to it. So what we're going to do is a drill where we're going to start off at 10% swings uh, at a game speed load stride and we're going to maintain that game speed load stride pace the entire time. We're going to go 10, 20, 30 all the way up to 100% swings and we're going to maintain the same load stride. So what that's going to look like is that my 10% swing I'm going to have a load stride like I would in a game. Let's say game seven of the World Series. This is the same load stride I'm going to take, but it's going to be a 10% swing right here. So right here, you see 10%, literally almost nothing on that ball. But here's where the trick starts to come to a head is when I start bumping up the speed, we're going to go 20%. The only thing that's going to change is my speed to the ball, not my load stride. So I'm going to load stride, give it about 20% into the ball. See, just a little bit more speed. Now we're going to bump it up to 30, 40. Now let's do one at 50%. Okay, so now the same load stride I had at my 10% swing, nice and relaxed, everything's exactly the same. But when it's time to add speed, we add some speed. We don't add speed in the load stride. Now, 80%, you guys don't need to see me do 60, 70%. You guys get the, just the gist of this. Then we're gonna go over how we actually apply this. So if I'm at an 80% swing, I'm still loading like I did on the 10% swing. Everything is exactly the same, except for when it's time for speed, I'm gonna add 80%. So right here, I'm gonna load stride nice and easy. <laughs> and I'm gonna add 80% swing. And now we're gonna go all the way up to 100% swing. Right here, everything's exactly the same. When I add speed, it's everything I've got. Boom. So, the idea, again, is in my load stride, it's exactly the same the whole time. I know I keep saying it a lot, but it's that important. Now, 
how you apply this is when you start off at 10%, pretty much everyone should be able to get this at 10%. Once you go up to 20%, you gotta be able to maintain that same load stride. If you get to a point, say 30, 40, 50%, wherever it's at, and you start getting quick to try to generate speed with your load stride or in your loaded position, then you need to back down one step, get it really good, and then concentrate on getting your load stride exactly the same. Because everyone's gonna be, oh, 10% swing. It's gonna be nice and easy to go nice and slow and then swing easy. But can you do that same easy load and stride on a 100% swing? Okay, when you get into the game, if you look like you do in practice and you are executing the same movements that you do in practice with the same pace, you're gonna have a much better chance at executing your swing that you practice on in, while you're training in the game. So if you look like this, in the game and in practice, and then in the, or you look like this in the game and practice, we can obviously see which one's going to be much more beneficial for actually transferring our training into the game. So guys, work on those 10%, 20%, 30, all the way up to 100. If you get to a sticking point, train it from there. Say, okay, I'm, I'm stopping at 50%. This is exactly what I have my online students doing when they're, when they're working on this, is when they're, when they're stopped, hey, that's what we're gonna do. On the field, if we can't do it, any faster than 30% perfect, how are we supposed to do it 40% perfect? If we can't do it at 40, how are we supposed to do it at 50? Those are the things you gotta start thinking about. Now, this is, this is training, of course, if you got practice or game or something like that, you gotta do what you gotta do. But when you're training on your own, you're getting this better, you have to make sure you can hit the first speed before you hit the next speed. And focusing in on this load stride is going to set the tone for your entire swing. So guys, don't take this for granted. Make sure you work on it. Dominate this drill and you're gonna give yourself a much better chance at getting what you, what you train into the game. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, stay tuned. I got an even better bonus video coming up for you. We're gonna play a premium video from our membership website at the end of this video where you can check it out by clicking on the link that pops up in the video or in the description below. Thanks again for watching guys. Good luck with your games, good luck with your swings, and we'll see you guys soon. Today, I'm gonna to show you the number one move that kills bat lag. But most importantly, we're going to do a drill that will instantly give you a tight transition into bat lag and have your swing look, looking drastically better today. The move that I'm talking about here is when we're going into our transition and the bat lays down, and now the only thing that we have to rely on for bat speed is our pure strength. From Mike Trout, he does this really, really well. You'll see as we pause him here in the max bat lag position, his barrel is really high and you can see that it's barely dipping into that line. You can imagine if this was a nail and this bat was a hammer, if I was trying to hammer this nail in like this, this would be kind of like me dumping the bat. But if I'm letting this hammer swing and slam into this ball over and over again, I'm gonna be very, very efficient. Now, I'm sure you guys are ready for it by now. Let's go ahead and dive into the wall drill. All right, guys, here we go, the wall drill. 